Hey, it's Cliff, and it looks like Bitcoin fell a little bit over $1,000 this week. So I'm going to hit on why it actually is going down and the concerns that are going on in the market. Now, most people that have been here in crypto for a while, they say $1,000 clip. That's not really that big of a deal. And we're not really that concerned. However, there could be issues that lead to a further decline. So I want to hit on that in this week in crypto video, as well as a few other things that I thought were interesting going on in our market. So first up, I got an article that says Silvergate stock plunges 31% as crypto bank delays SEC financial report. So Silvergate is a crypto friendly bank that is tied to a lot of different uh, cryptocurrency platforms. And there's a, a recent scare going on with how their financials are structured. So I'll just go ahead and get into it. It says Silvergate Capital Corporation, the parent company of Silvergate Bank, delayed its annual 10K report filing with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission on Wednesday, telling the agency it needs additional time to allow an independent accounting firm to complete certain audit procedures. In the filing, Silvergate also cited a number of circumstances that will negatively impact the timing of the 10K report. These include the sale of additional investment securities beyond what was previously anticipated and disclosed in the company's earnings release, as well as the sale of additional debt securities in January and February 2023, from which Silvergate expects to record further losses. So this is a another similar FTX situation with a crypto bank that is not having the best financial structure and they're tied to several different companies so that's creating massive fear in the market and so here's what actually happened with them it says silvergate reported a 1 billion dollar net loss as well as a decline in customer deposits of roughly 14 billion in the last quarter of 2022 citing the plan reduction in digital asset banking deposits along with industry-wide chaos obviously things like celsius ftx things like that were going on so the bank's deposits were rocked in the aftermath of the ftx collapse prompting it to tap the federal home loan bank for a 4.3 billion dollar loan in january and sold roughly 5.2 billion in debt securities according to the company's filings they're showing a massive hole in their accounting which led them to get a 4.3 billion dollar federal loan to help them cover their issues here and then moving on it just shows that silvergate which was hit with a class action lawsuit alleging it directly aided ftx fraudulent activities in december is also one of the most shorted stocks on wall street so not only are they dealing with a hole in their budget they're dealing with a class action lawsuit for being one of the most shorted stocks on wall street because of fraudulent ftx activities so with all of these issues that are going on with silvergate what do they have to say for themselves they just say that and a wednesday filing with the sec silvergate also said is currently analyzing certain regulatory and other inquiries and investigations that are pending with respect to the company so you read between the lines there and you can kind of tell that they were doing some shady business practices. Silvergate also added it is now in the process of reevaluating its businesses and strategies in light of the business and regulatory challenges it currently faces. So to me, that obviously says things are not good. Usually a business like this would try to give you your straight up political answer, but they're not even trying to do that. They're pretty much saying, yeah, guys, we are fucked. So Cliff, I don't bank with these folks. Why do I actually care about this? Why are you telling me this? Because this is what started all the fear in the market this week. I'll pull up a chart here. So here is Bitcoin. Obviously the name of the chart is Bitcoin tumble. So this is when the silver gate issue happened. You can see here, we fell about a about thousand dollars, a little bit more than that, but you can see this is where the panic started. This is where everything was going down. So we have this information that silver gate is possibly going under. Well, what happens from there? All right, so Coinbase gets involved. Coinbase halts payments with Silvergate Bank. It says it's another blow for Silvergate as Coinbase announced it is no longer accepting payments from the embattled crypto bank. So as you can see, fear is generating in this. The market is starting to get crazy and it's going to react because cryptocurrency is a very emotional market. Sometimes it doesn't even make sense the way it goes. And as we scroll down here, you can see a tweet from Coinbase that says, at Coinbase, all client funds continue to be safe, accessible, and available. In a recent development, out of an abundance of cautions, Coinbase is no longer accepting or initiating payments to or from Silvergate. Then they go on to say, Coinbase will be facilitating institutional client cash transactions with other banking partners and have taken 
proactive action to help ensure that clients experience no impact from this change. Coinbase goes on at that point to say, hey, here at Coinbase, we have minimal to none exposure to Silvergate, right? Hey guys, we're good. Keep putting your money in Coinbase and everything's going to be fine. So with this, Coinbase is a major player in cryptocurrency. I don't think I have to tell anyone that. They may not be number one or even possibly number two, but they are huge, especially when it comes to America. So if Coinbase dips out on Silvergate, that's obviously gonna create a huge panic. It's gonna create rumors that like everything that always happens in crypto, there's gonna be FUD and things like that. This, this Silvergate company is going under, hey, it's happening again. Everything that happened in 2022 is happening again. Everyone panic, everyone pull their crypto out, everybody get back into fiat, that kind of thing. So what kind of reaction did we have as Coinbase pulls out of Silvergate? Well, we have this here. Tether has no exposure to sinking crypto bank, Silvergate CTO says, right? So at this point, everyone's gonna say, oh, not us, we don't have that. Keep buying, keep putting money in our companies, keep doing whatever whatever that company does, keep doing that so we can keep our businesses running, right? In this case, Tether is a stable coin, but they still need that liquidity to keep their operations running. So as I scroll down here, this is what came out Thursday. This is the CTO and he is tweeting on Twitter to say Tether does not have any exposure to Silvergate, trying to reassure the people that there will be no issues with Tether. So now we have Tether and Coinbase who are commenting on things that are going on with the Silvergate situation. And that is creating our domino effect that is about to go into this article. This is growing list of crypto companies cutting Silver Lake ties. Crypto.com starts playing into this. Bitstamp jumped on board. Gemini is also saying, hey, we don't want any part of this. We're not allowing deposits or withdrawals through Silvergate. Let's get this cancer cell out of my company. So then Circle jumps on this and they say, we maintain relationships with several banking partners. We are sensitive to the concerns around Silvergate and are in the process of unwinding certain services with them and notifying customers. Otherwise, all Circle services, including USDC, are operating as normal. So they're in a position where they are tied to the Silvergate company, but they are making strides to break away from that bank and use different banking partners. Moving down, there's another company, Paxos, if you're involved with that, had made a statement that it discontinued transfers to its account with Silvergate, adding that it would continue to process all outgoing transactions. Uh, Tether, also as mentioned previously, made a statement. And then there is Galaxy, which says, in light of recent developments, Galaxy has stopped accepting or initiating transfers to Silvergate. As a firm, we continue to have no material exposure to Silvergate, and this action was taken out of an abundance of caution. And so as all of these other companies are pulling out of Silvergate, their stock is just getting wrecked. As you can see here, uh, hit the peak uh, February 15th, they were trading at around $22. And then if I scroll over to the third, they are trading at $5. So they are getting absolutely smashed. And that also is why Bitcoin is down this week in the market because of all the uncertainty going on with the different companies that people use to onboard and offboard Bitcoin. There's just uncertainty. Our market is very emotional and that's just how it goes. Which leads me to this article here. It says, Bitcoin, Ethereum plunge as market moles silver gate fears. Bitcoin, Ethereum and the wider crypto market were hit hard on Friday morning as the industry weighs concerns around embattled silver gate. So this article tells us that Bitcoin is down 4.5% in the past 24 hours, dropping from 23.5 to two week low of 22.2 in the early hours of Friday before climbing to around 22.3 by press time. Now, when we look at this, Bitcoin went down 4.5%. That's not that big of a deal in crypto, but we're looking at this could lead to something major. There could be another domino effect because cryptocurrency market is all tied together with several different companies in business. And when one goes down, the other is typically tied to the other and that's gonna create a domino effect. But it seems like the big players are actually acting on this now. And if we can think positive about anything that happened last year with all the issues with FTX and Celsius and things like that, at least maybe now we're in a situation where these companies have some kind of disaster response to where they can quickly react to things that are happening in the market like this. We need them to be on their toes and to protect investors where they can. So it seems like 
they heard the rumor, it came out, and these companies are pulling away from them as quickly as possible so they're not affected and we can maintain our price levels in the crypto market. Moving on from there, it looks like the IMF, the International Monetary Fund is back in the news. It looks like they're taking their focus away from El Salvador for a little bit to look at crypto more as a whole. And this article that says banning crypto should not be taken off the table. The IMF wants to see more regulation of digital assets but still says there could even be an outright ban on cryptocurrencies. So these statements came from Kristalina Georgieva, who is a IMF director. And so she says, we are very much in favor of regulating the world of digital money. However, if the regulation is slow to come and crypto assets become a higher risk for consumers and potentially for financial stability, the option of banning cryptocurrency should not be taken off the table. And when she did this, she was citing countries like India that explored the possibilities. And I'm sure she was probably thinking China and things like that who have banned crypto in the past. But the IMF is holding their stance that cryptocurrency is not money. She says there's still a lot of confusion. First objective is to differentiate between central banking digital currencies that are backed by the state and publicly issued crypto assets and stable coins. A lot of this is just coming back to they want control. They want to have their regulations in place before people actually start holding on to these crypto assets because there is utility within them that maybe the IMF might not want people to actually have, right? So what she can point to, and this is what she says in her statement, is that according to her state back, stable coins have reliability and reasonable good space for the economy, whereas non backed crypto assets are speculative, high risk investment and not money, which is true on some level. I don't disagree with her there. They are highly speculative. You could lose all of your money. And the idea of banning them just seems like something that I probably wouldn't want. Moving on from there, Visa is back in the news and it says Visa is not slowing down plans for crypto products. So every bear market that I've noticed, people will point to cryptocurrency and say, this is your decline. This is where companies will not want to invest in you. And to their point, that is very true. As the market tanks, usually people pull out of the market. They don't want to invest there anymore. And as we get into our bull cycle, people start jumping back in. That's when we get all these crazy ideas with NFTs or whatever it is. So with this, we haven't heard anything from Visa in a while. So the thought was maybe they were pulling back a little bit from the things that they were wanting to push inside their own business. So Visa actually has a head of crypto and his name is Kai Sheffield. And he said today in a series of tweets Tuesday that a router story claiming both Visa and MasterCard were slowing down their crypto push was inaccurate. So they had made an article about them saying they were no longer pushing crypto and he's come out to say that that is completely false. He added that despite the challenges and uncertainties in the crypto ecosystem, Visa believes that fiat backed digital currencies running on public blockchains have the potential to play an important role in the payments ecosystem. So Visa is still in uh, the idea that People are just making random articles that Visa is no longer in. That's not true, it's completely false. And he was here to clear up anything about that. Moving on. So I got this uh, article here about the or one of the creators of Tornado Cash. And it states that Tornado Cash contributor builds a new privacy tool and hopes it won't trigger the feds, right? Because he does not want his ass to be locked up in jail. So if you guys aren't familiar with Tornado Cash, it's just a platform where you could send your money and it would make the transactions a little bit more anonymous, you know, it kind of confuse people of which wallet was actually pushing the money and withdrawing the money. So it's anonymous. Obviously the government does not like that because then they can't track the transactions and they shut down this program called Tornado Cash. But he has something new. His name is Amin Salamani, and he says that he has created a fork that aims to be a better version of Tornado Cash, the blacklisted Ethereum coin mixer. The article states that US authorities last year controversially banned citizens from using the coin mixer Tornado Cash, but Ethereum developers have been working hard on a solution they hope the feds will stay away from called privacy pools. So a demo is gonna be released of this new coin mixing app. And it says that people can send and receive Ethereum, the second biggest cryptocurrency anonymously. Though this time around, there's a feature that proves the user is not a North Korean bad actor or some other type of criminal, which is what the federal, the federal government and at least America, or wherever you're from, is concerned about. They And in America's case, they're looking at North Korea. They don't want 
them to be uh, doing all of these different ransomware attacks where they're collecting money and is funneling into their missile programs, right? So that's what they're trying to avoid if they can track the transactions that helps them get after things a little bit better. But if we have this program called Tornado Cash, obviously it makes our life way too difficult, which is why it was banned last year. So with this new program, they'll be able to tell that you're not a North Korean bad actor or anybody that's doing some kind of criminal activity with this idea of privacy pools. So you can see here, Amin had a tweet where he talks about privacy pools version zero, the sequel to Tornado Cash. For me, I'm just wondering what is actually going into this to where they, they know you're not a bad actor, right? It has to be a way of keeping you anonymous, but yet still they know that you're not somebody who is a threat actor. So how are they doing that? What is going into this? And so it says here, the new app works just like Tornado Cash, but when users click the option to withdraw funds, they can generate a zero knowledge proof, which publicly shows they are not using a criminal blockchain address, but without revealing who they are. Zero knowledge proofs are used in cryptography to prove that something is known without revealing the known information directly. One of the reasons the Fed sanctioned the app last year was because hackers used Tornado Cash to launder funds from a massive attack on play to earn game Axie Affinity. So this should be interesting. I, I love that we can maintain our anonymous transactions. I'm all for that. But at the same time, I want the federal government to be able to catch criminals. That's just me though. Maybe you don't feel that way. I want them to catch criminals. Moving on from there. More doom and gloom in the crypto market. Kind of a little bit. This article says that just 16% of Ethereum stakers are in profit ahead of the Shanghai upgrade. So just put this in simple terms. A lot of people have staked their Ethereum tokens without the ability to pull out their money. So they have had their Ethereum held hostage for the longest time. And what people are wondering as originally we were supposed to be able to unstake Ethereum in March. However, that's pushed back to April as most people kind of thought this was actually gonna happen. And who knows, maybe it could get pushed back farther from there. But what people are looking at is that most people are not in profit as they have staked their crypto. Most people in general in crypto are probably not in profit depending on when they invested, if they got in last year, right? most people probably got in last year so nobody's in profit and they're giving them the ability to pull out their tokens supposedly in april so what is that going to do with the market so they're wondering how many people have lost faith in ethereum at this point and as they're able to pull out their tokens are they going to crash the market right so there, there could be several people that could just look at this and say screw it i've already lost my money let me just pull out what i have and you know lick my wounds and collect what I can get out of this and go invest in something else or use it for bills or whatever they need. Now, my rational thinking is if you've already lost a lot of money on your Ethereum tokens, why would you unstake it at that point and then go ahead and sell it for a loss when you could just keep it staked and earn rewards from your staked crypto and then hopefully the market's gonna come back and you'll be able to make your money again. But that is rational thinking and most people know by now that the crypto market is not rational at all. It's gonna do things that it's gonna do the complete opposite of what we think actually makes sense, right? So there is a good possibility that maybe people pull out and they tank the market when it comes to Ethereum. So here's a chart actually that shows from the point that you were able to stake your Ethereum December 1st, 2020 is what they're showing up until now in March. And you have this nice graph here to show you that you could be in, some of these people could be in profit, some of them are not. So it really just depends on individual situation of what time you actually got into the market. Either way, with everything going on with Silvergate, I think people were just looking for more irrational fear to tank the market. And this is a chart from Dune, who actually is quoting the 16% of stakers are in positive money. So what's gonna happen? Are they going to be able to pull out of staking and then are they gonna dump on the market even more, take their losses, you know? Is it new people that are just gonna say, screw this, I don't wanna be in crypto anymore because I lost so much money already? I don't know, we'll just have to see what happens. So that's enough bad news for the week. Just to cleanse the palate, I need to move on to some positive news. This one says charitable crypto giving continues through the bear market. So yes, we are not all degens in the crypto space. We are not just using our crypto to buy drugs. That is something we only do part of the time. The other time we're giving it away to charitable 
organizations. So this article just wanted to highlight that several crypto projects and DAOs have turned their attention to providing aid to the earthquakes that were going on in Turkey and Syria. So this charity just wanted to say that in the case of Turkey and Syria earthquakes, it's a, it's a terrible tragedy and it's a natural one. It's not something that happened between people doing bad things to other people. It is just something that happened in nature and it is terrible that it happened. And because of that, they are seeing a great donation activity going on to help those people. So that is something that the cryptocurrency movement is actually doing to help these people. So it's great that we are seeing people donate to traditional disaster relief efforts. And so for the last thing that I have here in the news, I have a piece on Ledger's new device, which is called Stacks. Before anyone asks, no, I am not sponsored by Ledger. And I'm, you're probably gonna realize that because I'm about to shit on this device anyway. So the article states that Ledger Stacks hands-on review, a hardware wallet with an iPod design flourishes. So as you can see here, this is what it looks like. It's this little like, iPod looking thing that connects to your phone with Bluetooth to help you look at different NFT features. So scrolling down, here's a little better picture of it here. It's almost like an iPod and it looks cool. I'll give them that. It is a different kind of design compared to your typical ledger like I have here, like this, this thing, you know, it is a little bit cooler looking. They're calling it slick. I'd agree with that. It is a slick looking device. Looks like it's made of aluminum and plastic. On the bottom side, there's a USB-C connector for charging and there's a sleep button on the side. You can also charge it wirelessly and it connects using Bluetooth and NFC technology. Here it is, you can see how thin it is and you can see it towards the top here, you can kind of add your own name because the idea behind these is that you can stack them. Obviously that's what they're called stacks and they have little magnets in them to where the, the uh, devices connect together so you can like stack them up. So the idea of this thing I think is cool, right? You have this little device, it's a little ledger that you can showcase your NFTs. When I'm thinking about it that way, I'm like, okay, this is cool. People who actually do buy NFTs, they want to show off the NFT. You know, they want to, you got a board ape or something. You want to be able to show your friends, you know, or maybe it has utility. Like it's going to get you in a club or something. You can whip out your stack and show them, Hey, I got the NFT. Let me in for free. I'm VIP, you know, let me in. But for me, here's where they failed. For one, if I scroll down, it'll actually show you Let's see here. Da, 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 da. This is them connecting it to the phone, which, all right, cool, whatever. But this is the actual device. So as you can see, there's no color in the device. So you're not actually showing off your NFT. You're showing off a black and white image of your NFT. To me, that's not very cool. The whole point of having NFT art is to have something that is beautiful, is very cool to look at. And with a crap screen like this, you're not gonna be able to see the full picture of what you actually want on there. So that's a fail. Now, one thing they could do is they could upgrade the screen and make it into something to where you could showcase off your NFT and that would make it more usable. But as I scroll up, I saw the price point, or was it? Yeah, 279 a pop. A simple ledger is like 80 bucks at most. I haven't looked at them recently, but they're under 100 bucks if I remember correctly, around there, you know, it's not a lot of money. So let's say they do wanna go in and they wanna build a better screen into these, the price on it's just gonna be so ridiculous that it's not something that anybody's gonna buy. Even looking at this price point of 279 a pop, no one's gonna buy these. I don't see it. Maybe I'll be completely wrong. People will go out and buy these, but to me, that is way too expensive for a black and white NFT crypto wallet. You know, like, no thanks, I will pass. But let's put all of that aside anyway. Why would you have a device that you can flash around your NFT? So let's say you do have one of those bored apes and it's worth a lot of money. Why would you be flashing that around anyway? That just seems like you're setting yourself up to get robbed, right? Because you have your phone on you that connects to it and then someone's gonna rob you. They're gonna come at you and force you to transfer that NFT to them and they're gonna take it and you're gonna run away and you're gonna lose all your money. I don't, I don't get the point of showcasing off your assets. That's, that's just me personally, right? That's not something you want to advertise to people. And it's not something that 
I would want to carry around with me anyway. Like, why would you have that device with you where you're going to show it off and you're going to have it where people can take advantage of you? Seems like the whole point of having a ledger device to me was for security and this is moving away from security. So I don't, I just don't get it. It's not, it's not a thing for me. Maybe you don't care. Maybe you want to walk around with the thing and show off your NFTs and that's cool, but I, I don't buy NFTs anyway. So it's just not for me. But anyway, that's all I got for this week in the news. Let me know what you guys think about what's going on in crypto right in the comments. And thank you to my Patreon supporter, Kevin. And hopefully you guys have a great week.